Female, female, female. Male, male, male. How can I tell? Females have lipstick. Females have lipstick. There'll always be one. <laughs> yeah, how do I tell? It's size. Oh, girls sorry. don't get big. The girls only have one job in life, and that's to lay eggs. You don't need to be big to lay eggs. <laughs> the boys get big because the boys fight for dominance. The bigger, the meaner, the nastier you are, the more dominant you are. The more dominant you are, the more space you have. The more space you have, the more female. Right, so there is that <laughs> in the wild, it's a ratio. Remember this. The boys have no feelings in any way, shape or form. They get in the wrong place, wrong time. He'll bite her, he can even kill her. Because he has no feelings towards her. Remember, you're dealing with an animal that has a brain the size of a golf ball. There's no thought process here. It's simply instinct. Crocodiles have been around on the face of the planet for over 200 million years. Looking like this, basically unchanged, they've looked like that for the last 65 <coughs> million years. Does that not suggest something? They don't need psychiatric help. <laughs> it says you're darn good at what you do, why change? We've been around for what, a couple of hundred thousand years? Look at the evolutionary change we've gone through and we still ain't got it right. <laughs> Ladies, that is the perfect body. <laughs> she sees life. That is something to strive for, isn't it? You just got to work out how to develop a tail, and you'll do all right. Look, they're, they're just an amazing animal that is designed for that survival. They are what we call an apex predator. He is up here. Sharks are apex, apex predators. Crocodiles, lions, these are all your apex. Right? And they're king of what they do. Um, they can go. The two reasons why they basically survived the dinosaur era: one, they can go long periods of time of inactivity, and simply they don't eat a lot of food. So let's go back to Charlie. Charlie was 12 and a half feet. He weighed when he was alive about 500 pounds. How many chickens, guys? Someone said 40 initially. Conscious guys, because I'm going to tell you one. One chicken a week. They're cheaper than your cat or dog to look after. <laughs> They're just not as friendly. <laughs> you and I are what they call endothermic. Endothermic means 80% of what we eat on a day-to-day -day basis does one thing. It, main, it maintains an internal furnace here and this furnace runs at 36, 37 degrees Celsius. He is what we call ectothermic. He gets okay. his energy source externally. What is the best external heat source you can get? Sun. Sun. What's the common term you call a reptile? You call it? Cold-blooded. Cold cold blooded. Cold blooded. Very simplistic. Their blood is not cold. On the right or wrong occasion, their blood can be hotter or colder than ours. So what we call them is solar heated. They get their energy from the sun. <coughs> when it's cool, they're inactive. When it's warm, they're still inactive. <laughs> simply, they're a goddamn lazy animal. <laughs> they exert energy when they have to, but 95% of the time, they will conserve it. All right? So, you, the bumps down the back are basically there for two reasons. If you have a flat surface, you'll absorb a certain amount of heat. You now go and put all these bumps over that surface, you've now increased the surface area. More surface area, more heat, Underneath those bumps is a very rich blood supply, which is pumped throughout the body to make him function. And the other reason they're there, if you look straight down a croc's back, they're not like that, guys. They're like this. They're slightly offset, and what that gives you now is friction reduction. You don't get a wake coming off his back as he's coming towards you. You can get a 15-foot crocodile moving through knee-deep water, and they will not disturb the surface of the water. It's like stealth, guys. Countercurrents. So when he gets close enough, it's an ambush attack. Bang. It's all over. All right now.
and I've carried that leaf with me for years. Did you read the same book? No one ever said that. Well, Smith wrote a book about somebody getting attacked by a That's a female guy. Isn't it? Excuse me, why, why yeah. does this guy open his mouth? All right. Why do they sit there with their mouths open? That's a female sitting on the edge there, guys. There's three theories why they do this. It's called gaping. Right, here was just doing a minute ago. One, the three reasons. One is a threat display. What they're saying to any other crocodile around me, you come any closer to me, I'm going to bite you. Estrines simply do it out of intolerance. The Australian freshwater croc does it out of defence. One of the other reasons, because there is so much closing pressure, isn't it now more relaxed to sit there with your mouth open? Most of the guys do that in the lounge room chair of a night time. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't admit it. And the other reason they do it is heating and cooling the blood to the brain. We perspire, dogs pant, crocodiles gape. So it's a reverse cycle air conditioner. On a really cold night, you open your mouth to the sun. You're going to warm the blood to the brain. On a really hot day, you sit in the water with your mouth open or you sit in the shade. The cool breeze, because the capillaries in the tongue are very close to the surface. So reverse cycle air conditioner. All right. The longest we've ever known a crocodile to go without food was suggestively 18 months. Wow. That was a wild caught animal in Western Australia. They brought in. It's, this was a stressful condition, guys. It hit on the bottom of its pond. When anyone approached the pond, it would hide. And it didn't feed for eight. <laughs> the last tragedy in Australia was mid last year. This was a guy and his wife were up in Lakefield <laughs> National Park. He was in a canoe in an area called Mainland. It was a mid, midway swimming hole or midway water hole. And this is known, guys. They release problematic crocodiles up there. Him and his wife were in this canoe. Canoes sit too close to the water. They're too unstable. And he was fishing out the back of this thing and he had live bait on his, on his rod. This croc started swimming towards his canoe. And he got his, his oar and he went to thump it and it snapped the, the oar in half. He went to hit it again and it grabbed his arm. It pulled him straight out of the canoe and that was the last his wife ever saw of the guy. <laughs> All right? She got flipped out into the water and she swam to the bank. Then she had to get in her car and drive 20, 20 minutes to the ranger station to notify him that her husband had been taken where the whole tragedy could have been avoided because they entered Nas Lakefield National Park. There's a sign that says, no canoes allowed. <laughs> All right? And these people went in there and what did they do as a result of it? They shot two crocodiles up there yeah. as a result of people doing stupid things. The drinking age for you attacks may occur injury or death. Right, well, this young kid, he must have been getting a little bit warm, you know. So he headed down next to the sign. And to cool off, what did he do? He shoved his head in the water. Oh. A seven-foot crocodile started rapidly swimming towards his head. He lifted his head up and got pinched on the face here. The newspapers the next morning said, crocodile attack. Culling required. Why don't the newspapers put it into perspective and say crocodile attack induced by beer and stupidity <laughs> and tell you the true story? <laughs> right? It's people doing stupid things. But the tragedy, guys, which covers all of them, happened just over 20 years ago up in a tributary of the Daintree River called Barrett's Creek. There was a Christmas Eve party. It was the 21st of December. And this party was well and truly in the swing, I tell you. And the general, gentleman's property was Michael Turner, and his property backed onto a creek called Barrett's Creek. Barrett's Creek looks like that, right? But it's lined by mangroves. You can't see the stars. Now, a lot of this had been consumed at the party, and most people who do this and associate with crocodiles think this is a preservative. <laughs> and later that night, six of them said, we're going for a swim. Yeah. And most of the people... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. Now, most of the people at the party told them that they were idiots, which they were, but they wandered down. One guy waded straight in. The tide was so low that night, the water was this deep. One guy waded straight in and crouched down. Beryl waited, she came down, she sat on the lower level of the boat ramp. Now Beryl's normal seating posture was this big. They were, <laughs> but Beryl, for some unknown reason, decided she needed to wash her hands. 
So she bent over, so she cut her posture from this to this. Beryl was gone. Even the people there didn't realise initially what had happened. And then they realised crocodile attack. Right? And the locals went stupid. Guys, remember, we are now dealing with a protected species. But the government turned a blind eye because the locals wanted revenge. And as a result of that, they shot somewhere between 30 and in excess of 100 crocodiles out of that Daintree River because of Beryl's stupidity. So the government realised we had to do something. So from Cairns population 100 years ago was 4,000 people. Cairns population now is 140,000 and we're growing at about 200 people a month. People just want to come and live up here, guys, because you can understand why. Is that because you're here? <laughs> oh, I'll get embarrassed with you around. <laughs> no, that is not the reason. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm glad I only see you three. <laughs> um, so, 140,000 people now, the interaction has changed, guys, and they refer to these animals and cassowaries as problematic animals. They become more problematic with the more people moving up here. So, there is a management thing in place now called IMAC intense management for an area of crocodiles. And it's from Admiralty Island in the Trinity Inlet through to the southern bank of the Daintree River. All these creeks along the coast, except for three creeks, the crocodiles are not allowed to stay. If they're documented and reported, they are trapped and removed. The three creeks that they can stay, you'll go right over the three of them this morning. Hartley's Creek right here. The next one up is Mowbray River. And when you get into Port Douglas, it's Dixon Inlet. Those three creeks, the crocs can stay. Any other creek, the crocs are trapped and removed. But what they're realising, I can't trap you and relocate you. They are like a dog. They have a homing beacon. They come home. There was one animal, you know the tip of Australia? On the western side of the Gulf, they caught an animal there. They, they put it in a net and they put it under a helicopter and they moved it. 80 mile across the mainland and let it go on the eastern coast of Australia. Five and a half weeks later, this crocodile went up to the tip of Australia and came back down. He went home. And he was radio tracked within a kilometre of where they caught him. So they can't relocate, guys. So they bring them into farms. We don't take them here because wild crocodiles just stress out in captivity and they don't do really well. But unfortunately, with urbanisation, some things suffer. What's the difference between a crocodile and a All right, there's, throughout the world, there's 23 species of crocodilians. And there's two species of alligator, 13 species of true crocodile. Then you've got your garials and garials from Sri Lanka and India, and your caimans from Central and Latin America. A freshwater croc, which we'll go and see very shortly, has a very long, skinny snout. When he shuts his mouth, that's what you see top and bottom teeth. The estuarine crocodile has a very wedge-shaped snout. When he shuts his mouth, you see top and bottom teeth. The American alligator has a very broad snout. It's like a shovel. Yep. And when a gator shuts his mouth, that's what you see. The bottom row of teeth fit inside sockets within the top jaw. And gators are considered to be puppy dogs when you compare them to these guys. Uh, these guys have no tolerance. Um, we were brought up on a song, guys, in Australia when we were kids. Never smile at a crocodile, because you can see all its teeth and it's always smiling back at you. You can't sing it with a gator, and it sounds stupid anyway. Now, you've got gators at home and you've got a crocodile back at home too. And the major difference between a croc and a gator